So we're continuing our Kingdom series uh, this morning. And a couple of weeks ago, Alison Matheson rounded off for us the Sermon on the Mount. We were in the Sermon on the Mount for quite a long time. And Alison kind of rounded that off for us a couple of weeks ago. That platform of teaching that is given so that we can put into practice what it is that we seek to be as we live as people of the kingdom of God. And he explained that the key to putting those words into practice was the relationship that we have with the Father. So as the Father wills, Jesus makes possible and the Holy Spirit makes it happen. Remember the driver for our series is that little section in Acts chapter 1 um, it, so that after Jesus was resurrected and before Jesus ascended, Jesus teaches his disciples for 40 days concerning the kingdom. And then, of course, we know that shortly after Jesus ascended, the Holy Spirit filled those disciples and they impacted and influenced Judea, Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth with the message of Jesus for the glory of of the Father, and that's what we are believing for as we go through this series. That as um, as Alistair emphasised a couple of weeks ago, that as we listen to the Father, as we get to know what He wants to say, what He wants to do, that out of that relationship with Him, then that we can know that Jesus made it possible through the Holy Spirit within us, and we can be those people that impact and influence Inverness, the Highlands, and the world with the message of Jesus. For the glory of the Father. So this morning we're coming to a new section of teaching concerning the kingdom. We've covered the Sermon on the Mount and now we're going into a little bank of teaching where Jesus says the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is like. And there's quite a lot of those and we're going to be going through a number of them. So let's get stuck into it and this morning Kath is going to come and bring God's word to us. And we're reading from Matthew chapter 13 and verses 1 through 9 and then 18 to 23. And we're going to be looking this morning, first of all, at the parable of the sower. Thank you, Kath. then 18 to 23. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat <coughs> and sat in it. Sorry, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables saying, a farmer went out to sow some seed as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever is ears, let him hear. And then we move on to verse 18. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears a message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good ground refers to someone who hears the word and understands it, 
this is the one who produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. May God bless this word. Thank you, Karen. The parable of the sower is one of the few parables that we have where Jesus explains that parable to us. And much has been said concerning the parable of the sower. It's a very well-known parable. And for a couple of weeks now, I've been knowing that I'm going to be speaking on this this morning. So I was asking the Lord, you know, what is it that you want to say to us afresh from this very well-known passage? And what the Lord showed me was a five-letter word in the explanation of the parable that is common to all four outcomes that we read about in the parable of the sower. And the five-letter word is simply hears. Hears. Look at verses 18 to 23. First outcome. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom, doesn't understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is a seed sown along the path. It's the first outcome. Second outcome, the seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they've got no root, they last only a short time. Third outcome, the seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. And then the fourth outcome, but the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop 160, 30 times what was sown. And what the Lord spoke to me about was two things. How well am I communicating the message about the kingdom so that people hear it? Second question is how well am I receiving or hearing the message about the kingdom. You know, communication involves three things, doesn't it? It includes the sender, the message, and the receiver. If one of those things is missing, communication just doesn't work. So if there's no message, then the sender and the receiver just look at each other blankly. If there's no receiver, then the sender gives a message, but no one's listening. And if the sender, as if the sender is not present, then you have a message and a receiver, but there's no way for the message to get to the receiver. So communication involves three things: the message, the sender, and the receiver. So back to what the Lord spoke to me about concerning this passage two things how well am i communicating or sending the message about the kingdom so that people hear it and how well am i receiving or hearing the message about the kingdom so let's actually look at these in reverse order how well am i receiving or hearing the message about the kingdom Because in effect, we can measure it, can't we, by the outcome that it generates. Every time we hear the message of the kingdom, and let's face it, we hear the message of the kingdom a lot. We hear it on a very regular basis. Every time we hear that message, what outcome does it generate in us? And the Lord really spoke into my heart concerning this. How many sermons or teachings have I heard that I've forgotten about by the time I walk out of whatever meeting it was I heard it? How many who were here last week remember what Tim Jack spoke about on Sunday morning and has showed off and shown her a way of how how much she's remembered? But how much of us remember what was said beyond the title or what a good message it was? Do we remember the challenge that he brought to our hearts? You see, when we hear the message of the kingdom, 
when we hear the message of the kingdom all the time, how much of it falls on the path? How much of it falls in a place that is hard, almost immune to the message of the kingdom? Either because we've heard it so often, or because we know all that stuff already. How much of it just comes into our ears, we think it's wonderful, and then it bounces out, and all we can remember maybe is what the title of the message was, or what a wonderful message it was. God says, break up your unplowed ground. Break up your unplowed ground because it is time to seek the Lord. What places in our heart are hard, are immune to the message of the kingdom? God says, break up your unplowed ground for it is time to seek the Lord. We need to cultivate a place in our hearts where the message of the kingdom can actually land and not just bounce off and get snatched away. Because if we're serious about receiving the word of God, and not just hearing it, but also receiving it, then we have a responsibility to make sure that it actually lands in a place that we can receive it. But we know the parable of the sower is not just about that. It's not just about making sure the message of the kingdom lands on soil in our hearts. It has to be a place where roots can go down. It has to be a place that is free from thorns. It has to be in good soil if the message of the kingdom is going to produce any fruit in our lives. And if we're truthful with ourselves, there's been many occasions when we've heard a message where we felt God speak to us, where we feel maybe full of the Holy Spirit, and then maybe 24 hours later, or 48 hours later, we feel like we're back to square one again. It's like that song in the Poor Tree Kids by the Corries, where poor trees uh, playing a game of snakes and ladders. And the song goes, he threw seven sixes in a row, and the game was nearly done. But then he landed on a snake finished on square one <laughs> sometimes we feel such a sense of elation and joy and um, about what God is doing or what God is saying it's like the seven sixes in a row and then later we just feel like we're back on square one before us are all the same challenges before us are all the same worries. The same issues are there before us. It's the same old, same old, same old. You know, after Jesus was baptized, immediately he went into the wilderness, didn't he? But he was tempted by the devil. Immediately after that moment of joy, if you like, feeling the pleasure of the Father, immediately after that, he went into the wilderness and was tempted by the devil. Listen, Jesus understands the blessings of, if I can say this, the seven sixes in a row. Jesus understands those moments in our lives that happen. But he also knows about snakes. He also knows that snakes can take you down to rock bottom. But in that wilderness... In that temptation, Jesus also showed that if you have roots, if you have the word of God, yeah. then you can yield not to temptation and you can be delivered from evil. Amen. You can get through to the other side. Amen. So Jesus says it's not just about making sure the message of the kingdom lands in some soil, but it needs to be soil that is rooted and grounded in the word of God. And when you're on square one, you need to draw on the resources, on the treasure of Scripture and the promises of God. You need to get into your heart who you are in Christ Jesus. You need to know the truth. Why? Because the truth sets you free. Amen. But as we know from the parable, it's not just about that. It's not just about making sure the word lands in some soil. It's not just about being rooted and grounded in the word of God. We also have to make sure that it's free from thorns. We have to make sure it's good soil if the word of God 
if the message of the kingdom is going to produce any fruit in our lives. And so Jesus says the thorns are representative of life's worries, deceitfulness of wealth, etc. So that means we're not only to remember what Jesus said, but we also need to apply it to our lives by faith. We need to believe the word of God and apply it. In other words, we have to put faith into action, put into practice those good work, words to trust him and live as those who are in the kingdom and not live as those who are in the world. Remember what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Then later on, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. As Alistair Matheson explained to us just a couple of weeks ago, the good works we do are based on the good words we have heard from Jesus. And we can do those good works because of the relationship we have with Father. Because we want to please him. We want to glorify him, to seek his kingdom. And as we listen to Father, then we, but he will let us know what to do, what to say, and then we can obey. And then, because Jesus made it possible for us, and the Holy Spirit makes it happen. And so we cultivate that good soil, that soil that produces fruit 160, 30 times what was sown. You see, when the sower sows, the sower expects a harvest. He expects a harvest. And when we hear the message of the kingdom, it's expected to generate a harvest in us. Good fruit, much fruit, fruit that will last is the message of the kingdom. Bearing fruit in our lives. Do we see the growth that the Lord brings? Because one sows, another waters, but it is God that brings the increase. Good soil. Are our hearts places of good soil this morning? Or do we need to plough hard areas of our hearts? Do we have to get the word of God into our lives? Do we have to get rid of some thorns and some worries? To make them a place of good soil. Because if they're a good soil, then the fruit is there and more fruit will come. Jesus wants us to get, this is what Jesus wants us to get. This is the intention of Jesus. For three outcomes when he explains the path, the stony ground, the place of flowers. And then he says in verse 23, but, but. In other words, what's going to be said is the main point. The seed that is sown on good soil. That's the intention. This is what the kingdom looks like. This is what people of the kingdom are to have. Good soil. Not hard places. Not places where there's no foundation in the word of God. Not places where there's thorns and worries and all that kind of stuff. Making us unfruitful. But good soil. Soil, that's what people of the kingdom look like. And if we're in the kingdom, that's what we need to look like. Places of good soil. So that it produces fruit. So we've looked very briefly at the question of how well are we receiving the message of the kingdom. By looking at the outcomes associated with hearing that message. So now we turn our attention to the first question. How well am I communicating or sending the message of the kingdom. If there's no sender, then the message cannot be sent to the receiver. This is why Paul says in Romans 10 from verse 13, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one on whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? 
And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. It's a wonderful truth, isn't it? That everyone who calls in the name of Lord can be saved. That is a wonderful, wonderful truth. It's a wonderful truth. And you can see the argument that Paul is making to the Romans. If you want people to know that wonderful truth, then they, then they need to believe in Jesus. But if they've not heard about Jesus, then how can they believe in him and how can, how can they then be saved? And how can they hear about Jesus unless someone tells them? And how can someone tell them unless someone is sent to them to tell them? You see, there, there is a responsibility on our part. If we are people who have already received the message of the kingdom, and if we have cultivated that good soil to produce fruit, then we have a responsibility to communicate the message of the kingdom. Because that's what God created. We are like those plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. You see, the message of the kingdom, when it's received and bears fruit, it bears, it bears fruit with the seed of the kingdom in it, which then needs to be sown. That's the way God designed it. That's the way he created it. God did not say in the beginning, uh, he, said, he didn't say be fruitful. He said be fruitful and multiply. That's what God's intention is. The fruit in our lives reproduces somewhere else in someone else. That's the kingdom. And if I don't tell people about the wonderful change in my life that Jesus has given to me, then how can I expect anyone to call on the name of the Lord and be saved? If I don't live in a way that points people to Jesus, then how can I expect anyone to come and call on the name of the Lord and be saved? If I don't make the most of every opportunity, because there is a value and opportunity. See, I was listening last week. If there's a value and opportunity, if I don't make the most of every opportunity, then how can I expect anyone to come and call on the name of the Lord and be saved? God does not want anyone to perish, but calls everyone to come to repentance. And he chooses to use people like you and I to share the good news of the kingdom. He's choosing us. He's sending us. He tells us to go. On Tuesday evening at the prayer meeting, there was a prophecy brought. And the essence of it was this. It was brought again through Anne, Anne Coppard. And the essence of it is this. Jesus called his disciples many years ago to be fishers of men. He's calling us to be fishers of men again. Many have been deceived by saying that they are not gifted. But God is a creative God. God can come and whisper to us concerning one next to us or far away from us, bringing words of life. God does not leave us. And as we are prepared to step out and open our mouths and give of ourselves to him, then God will bring the fruit. God knows the sorrow and the anxiety within people. And he will speak to them through you with words of knowledge, words of life, even those close to us. God will give us the words as we are willing to open our mouths and allow him to fill them. He is the God of the impossible. Never forget God is with us. Open up to what he has given you and he will bring blessing in this place and in places he sends us. Listen for his voice. Don't listen to the enemy that says, we can't. Even neighbours, friends, strangers, beyond our comprehension, God will do. Be prepared to be obedient to him. That was the essence of the prophetic message that came on Tuesday evening at the prayer meeting. The Lord is asking us afresh to be fishers of people. And that comes from a place of good soil to be prepared where when the fruit can come with the message of the kingdom in it. That's why we're excited about try praying in April. Because it's an opportunity to pray about those in our world around us. 
To say, who can I give this to? Who can I have the conversation with to try praying? So that they will try praying and find the God that is real, that loves them, that cares for them, that can save them, so that they can call on the name of the Lord and be saved. That's why we're excited about conversations people are having on the streets of Inverness, whether it's out on a Saturday morning like last week, or whether it's out with organizations like Street Pastors, because people hear the message of the kingdom. That's why we're excited about encouraging all of us to be a witness for him where we are, to be ambassadors for Jesus because people hear the message of the kingdom. It's not necessarily about how many converts. That's parable the source says that not everyone that hears it will become a convert. But the important thing is that people hear People need to hear. There's one thing that we need to be very aware of though. And it comes in the words that Jesus said. Concerning the seed that fell on the path. Because that represents anyone. Hears the message about the kingdom. And does not understand it. Listen we have to speak in a language that people understand. We have to make sure that we're not only prepared. To be the sender of the message but that the message can be understood by the receiver. I find it interesting in the parable of the sower that the first outcome is because people do not understand, but in the last outcome, in the good soil, it's people that do understand. And if we are people that do understand because our hearts are places of good soil, then we need to communicate in an understandable way, in a culturally relevant way, without changing the message of the kingdom. You know, on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came to those 120 believers, it said, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the crowd came together and were bewildered, bewildered, bewildered because each of them was hearing them speak in their own language. They were amazed and astonished, saying, We hear them in our own tongue speaking the mighty deeds of God. Oh, that we might speak the words of God to people in a way they'll understand through the enablement of the Holy Spirit. Because without him, we can do nothing. So to bring this to a conclusion, how well am I receiving the message about the kingdom? Is the message of Christ being received within me to good soil so that it bears fruit? So that it bears fruit with the seed of the kingdom in it. How well am I communicating or sending the message about the kingdom? I am, am I as someone that sends the message in an understandable way? Because it's through the spirit within me. I said earlier that communication involves three things. The message, the sender and the receiver. Communication doesn't work if any of these three things are missing. And when it comes to the message of the kingdom, the message of the kingdom is the one thing within those three aspects of communication that's never broken, that's never wrong. The message of the kingdom, the message of Christ is not the problem. It stands. The cross still stands. The bit that tends to get broken, the bit that tends to get damaged, or not working properly is either the receiver or the sender or both. And I don't know about you, but my receiver is not always functioning as it should. The message does not always land in good soil within me. After the fall, Genesis 3.23 says this about Adam. So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. You see, God's original design was good soil, but sin spoiled it. There is work to do in our hearts. We have to tend our hearts. We have to guard our hearts. 
we have to make sure the soil of our hearts are soft, that it's rooted in God's word, pulling up any weeds or thorns so that our hearts are places of good soil. And to be honest with you, my sending of the message isn't always functioning properly. Sometimes it's not understandable. Sometimes it's not even the message of the kingdom. And so those that I'm sending a signal to receive mixed messages. It's like Paul says in Romans 7.15. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. And what I hate, I do. It's all a bit wonky. A little bit out of kilter. Paul goes on to say, For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep doing. Now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living within me that does it. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am! Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? And then some of the most wonderful words in all scripture. Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us. Hallelujah. In us. Hallelujah. In us. Who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. There is a way to get our receiver properly aligned. There is a way to make sure that our hearts are places of good soil. There is a way to make sure that our sending signal is strong and bold and understandable. And the way is through Jesus Christ, through being alive to him by his spirit within us. Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know, we've covered many things today. There's challenges on how we receive the message of the kingdom. There's challenges on being fishers of men and women about, uh, you know, sending the message. And, and I don't want any of us to go away today feeling that we can't. Don't let anyone feel that we can't have hearts that are good soil, that produce fruit with the message of the seed in it, of the kingdom in it, that we can't speak to people in an understandable way. I don't want anyone here going away feeling that they can't. It's been a pretty powerful message, uh, image going around social media recently, and it's pretty powerful. Just let it sink in. Don't let the enemy say you can't. Because with Christ, you can. Amen. With Christ, you can. Because nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. How well am I receiving the message of the kingdom? You might feel this morning that your heart has got hard places in it. You might feel that you don't really have the word of God rooted well in your life. You might feel that there's lots of thorns in your life, worries, concerns. But don't let, don't let the enemy say that you can't have good soil. Because with Christ you can. With Christ you can. You might feel, well, I'm not very good at, at communicating the, the, the message of the kingdom. You might feel, well, it's, it's not for me. Through the prophetic word and through what we've been sharing, don't let the enemy say you can't. With Christ you can. 
with Christ you can. There is a way to make sure that we have good soil and that we communicate the message of the kingdom in an understandable way. With Christ we can. With God nothing is impossible. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So don't let the enemy say that we can't because with Christ we can. Let's bow our hearts in prayer, shall we? Just as the music plays, just allow the Holy Spirit just to speak into your heart. What's he speaking to you about this morning? Is it areas of your heart that need to be ploughed? To become soft? Is it about getting the word of God rooted more into your life so that when those trials come, those suffering come, you can draw on the resources of his word because you then have roots? Is it about thorns, worries? Is making the message of the kingdom within you unfruitful? Is it about how you're communicating? Are you, am I communicating mixed messages? Or is it always just the message of the kingdom or not even the message of the kingdom? Where is the Holy Spirit speaking to you about this morning? Where is the Holy Spirit speaking to me about this morning? Just allow him to minister in. Repent where you need to. Allow his love for you to fill you. Allow his hand to mold you. Allow his spirit to change you to be more like Jesus, who was the perfect receiver, the perfect sender of the perfect message. Come, Holy Spirit. God responds to faith and faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God so let faith arise don't let the enemy say you can't because with Christ you can with God nothing is impossible and we can we can with Christ be people who have good soil that produce fruit with the seed of the kingdom in it we can be people who send the message of Jesus to a world that needs to hear it. We can, with Christ, be people that communicate the message of the kingdom in an understandable way. Thank you, Jesus. Thanks be to God who delivers us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thanks be to him that we do not need to live by the flesh and the weakness of our own hearts, but we can live by the Spirit. Thank you, Lord.